<laughs> Scott Sinclair. He is the Dell Storage Product Manager. Come on in. Hey, Scott. Hi. Nice Good to meet you. Good to see you. The Dell Storage Product Manager? <laughs> well, I think there's more than one of us. I'm just going to say. One of? Yeah. yeah. So which the product? Best? The so, best. The well, best. Yeah, so I'm the product manager for the FS7500. Ah, uh, yes. Which we just announced yesterday at the Dell Storage Forum, and we're all really excited about it. So, that, so talk a little bit about yeah. it. Okay, yeah, sure. It's uh, The FS7500 is really one of the first products. It's it's a NAS product, but it's more than that. Mm -hmm. It's it's based on a scale-out file system architecture, which traditionally those have been reserved for the very high end. That's HP. a high performance computing application, Exactly. Right? High performance computing. All the data analytics that you know, Michael was talking about this morning. All those sorts of things. So what we did was we wanted to go after, you know, or go into the mid-range SMB, you know, kind of this mid-market space. And we said, you know what, we with, we need to help our customers and, and really help the IT administrators out there handle unstructured data and yeah. handle it in a way that you know is is different than everyone else. So we looked across the industry and we found this the scale out file system architecture technologies that traditionally were reserved for these HVCC computing space. And what we did was we put our engineers on it and with the help of the Equalogic team, which is known for essentially being one of the easiest to use pro storage products in the industry. And we took this technology and we made it very simple to use and made it in a, in a form factor and, and a deployment model that works for an SMB uh, uh, customer. It was, so it's like an appliance today? It, exactly, exactly. On the network? It, it's an appliance that plugs into an Equalogic group. Okay. And and <laughs> it, it, He didn't bite on that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, an you appliance on the network. You appliance on the network. Yeah, yeah. So many like, sort, of like a, a that. sort of like a network appliance. You know, it's, it, it's been a long day, so <laughs> I got it. It's only 10.45. Oh, uh, wow, what the yeah, heck? Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah, I never sleep. I uh, know. No, somebody, um, somebody referred to, to, to this as this was your strategy to, 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 to go after NetApp. Not the way you're interested in doing direct company com competition you and know, comparisons, but, but is, are you going into those kinds of workloads yeah. then? Well, you know, we, like, I, you know like you were saying, we, we hesitate to really call out or, yeah, or yeah, go yeah. after any one specific competitor. But, you know, at the end of the day, there are there are folks in this space, right? That right. have file storage needs that are looking at, at different ways to do it. And some of the traditional companies out there, while they do have good products, are based off of architectures that are that are old and, and actually need to be updated. And for example, one of the examples of that is they may have um, essentially architectural limitations in how big they can scale. A lot of customers that we speak with that have. Um, traditional NAS or unified products today run into a lot of challenges around how big a file share can be. Yeah. So essentially with data growing out of control, folks are actually going in and saying, um, you know, I have IT guys that literally all they do is every week or every couple days, they got to go in, provision more storage and create another file share. And that's just creating more and more work. So, so a lot of simplification there around Exactly. Managing file share. Exactly. Simplification. Because what we've done is we've done something completely different. Is how these traditional file systems or these traditional NAS uh, arrays work is they basically force you to carve up little pieces of data and then basically manually manage your data and make sure that you're, you're actively distributing it across all the different storage. Okay. We make that all that automatic. So instead of having you know, essentially lots of little shares, you can create one giant share. Like for example, the FS7500 that we just announced yep. um, allows you to create a single file share up to half a petabyte if you want to. Aren't there um, some downsides to that in terms of managing it? Uh, you know, the, the interesting thing is we've seen a lot of folks um, actually prefer to okay. have the flexibility. Now, if if you want to carve it up, you can carve that up however you want. Okay. If you want to have thousands of small shares, we have no problem with that. So what so, kind of customer really prefers the, the bigger share versus the smaller individual? You know, it's it's more than just, you know, um, more than just the ability to scale. Like, I, I talk with a lot of folks and they say, well, you know what, that's great that you guys can scale bigger than ever, uh, to, to file shares bigger than everyone else. Yeah. But I don't have that much data. Right. right. I'm a 50 <laughs> person, I'm, data. I'm a 50, I'm um, a 100 person exactly. customer, <laughs> company, right? right. Exactly. Yeah. So what these guys do is, it, you know, uh, it's, it's not just about the ability to scale. It's it's about the virtualization aspect that that ability to scale provides. Okay. So what happens is when you take an FS7500 and you use it within an Equalogic group, 
Equal Logic has the ability to essentially create a virtualized pool of storage. So what it will do is it will move data across storage arrays in order to load balance it to make sure your performance is utilized uh, as efficiently as possible. The FS7500 does the same thing. If you need more performance, you can scale by adding in another one, which gives you four active-active redundant controllers that essentially allow you to load balance across all of these. So what does this do? It essentially means that as you expand your storage needs, you can make sure that all the processing and memory are working to its fullest capacity and all the drives on the back end are working to its fullest capacity. A lot of these traditional architectures, what we talk about, you know, they have limits in what they can scale. Those limits translate directly down to hard drives. So what that means is this share is tied to these three hard drives. Mm -hmm. If folks are not accessing that share, then these three or four hard drives are not spinning. Yeah. With us, you know, since the shares are virtualized across all the drives, essentially you're getting you're getting the maximum amount of performance out of the storage that that you paid for. Is so, anybody else using a sort of a similar architecture? Or? Uh, there is there is some folks using a, a similar architecture that are out there, but n but they're pretty much reserved to the HPCC space. Okay. Dell's the only the only company that I'm aware of right now that is actually taking this type of technology and saying, we're going to make it easy to use and affordable for the SMB and mid-market space. Okay. Uh, Equalogic is sort of a, uh, was it, if you, if you use a classic Clayton Christensen model, it was a low-end disruptor, right? Came up and yep. started moving into larger and larger environments. And uh, with high-performance computing, you're taking something that's very high-end and you're pushing it down. A lot of people have failed at that kind of thing, Take, uh, taking a high-end solution and trying to scale it down to make it usable by a smaller customer. Why are you successful? Well, you know, I, I think a lot of it is based off of the um, the uh, focus that Equalogic has had and the history that Equalogic has had at ease of use. Is This is something that, you know, what we've decided to do is we've taken a very, um, a, a very complicated and very complex and very feature-rich uh, capability. And what we basically said is, let's focus on the customers, let's look at what their core needs are and let's drive ease of use as the top priority. So we've actually made, in, in the first release, we've made decisions where we put ease of use above capability on this. I mean, it, essentially, when you're trying to take something down to an SMB space um, from, you know, that used to be up in the high end, right. the, the biggest challenge that you have is high end systems have you know, 17,000 buttons and knobs and things. A lot of knobs. Things that you <laughs> a, lot of knobs no, a, a lot of knobs that you can use right. to, yeah. to, to essentially get this thing to work right. Okay. And, and scientists like that. They do. And yeah. large customers like it. You know, large enterprises love it because they can tweak it to their environment. However, the challenge is for the SMB, they don't want that. They want one knob. They want one button. Yeah. Yeah. So, we were talking yesterday about how, uh, you know, CEOs, they don't want to pay people to to know that in and out, to, to, for that to be their expertise. Exactly. Exactly. And they want to move away from that, and they want it to be more easier and more consumer friendly, almost not consumer friendly, but uh, almost like consumer any, friendly, though. but almost like it, right? Yeah. It, so you're finding that as well. It sounds like. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and and that's has that been going on for a while, or did that is that a shift? Uh, as far as a strategy, or as far as no, a as far as far as that mentality, you know, moving away from someone, one person or two people being solely focused on. You know, yeah. managing all of that. Well, you know, it, it depends on the it depends on the environment. It depends on sure. the you know their design uh, in, within their their IT infrastructure. Um, what we've really noticed is, you know, if you look at um, some of these SMB shops, they have more IT generalists rather than specialists, and so that's what we try to design for. Okay. Is we try to go after and and put a essentially a laser focus on ease of use. Um, try to drive something that an IT generalist can come up, understand, and as we add new features and capability, what what that does is we keep it within that same framework. And so it's a framework that they're familiar with and they're comfortable with and an understanding of, um, of, of how things work. So when we look at actually adding new features, we actually put them in, in context around the expectations of existing customers. Okay. Scott, that was great. I appreciate yeah. you coming on. No we um, look forward to hearing more yeah, about okay. uh, as you start to deploy across the rest of the platforms. Absolutely. Okay. Welcome good. to the Cube. Right, You've been you. cubed. Thank, All right, thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so great. much. We appreciate right. it.